Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be putting together a budget gaming PC. Now, this is going to do a lot of light gaming really well. Some of the higher end games may need to be dropped down, but for the price here, I think this is totally worth it. And these are actually some of my favorite builds. Now, along with PC gaming, this thing's also going to be able to handle the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii, 3DS, and even PS2 emulation. So we also have that going for us here at about a $200 price tag. So like I mentioned, I picked all of this up on eBay, and the main heart of this build here is actually an older Lenovo business small form factor PC. We have an i5-4570, that's a quad-core CPU at 3.2 gigahertz with a burst up to 3.6, 8 gigs of RAM and no hard drive. And it looks like this also came with a keyboard and mouse for $115 shipped. It came just like this, one of the best packaged used PCs that I've ever picked up. Now, one of the main issues when turning one of these older small form factor PCs into a gaming setup is our GPU. Now, we need a low profile GPU that doesn't require external power. Luckily, there are some choices on the market right now. Like the older 750 Ti's, unfortunately I can't find one for a good deal so I'm not going to fork out that much money for them. You could also go with the GTX 1050, but my personal choice would be the GTX 1650. They make a GDDR5 version and a GDDR6 version, but they do go for around $150 to $160 depending on where you pick one up, and that would significantly increase the price of this build, bringing it way over that $200 threshold. Now, if you have the money, I would definitely go with the low-profile GTX 1650, but I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible, so I did a little bit of searching, and I came across a GT1030 GDDR5 version on eBay for $65, so that's what we're going to be using in this build. And I've tested this in the past in some of my other small form factor builds. I'm a big fan of this little card. Now, it's definitely not the most powerful card that we can fit in here, and like I mentioned, if you can afford the GTX 1650, I would definitely go with it. It's night and day. But in my opinion, I think this is one of the best budget GPUs that you can throw inside of the small form factor Dell, Lenovo, or HP systems. So when this is all said and done, we're going to have a budget small form factor Lenovo PC with a quad-core i5-4570, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 MHz, and the NVIDIA GT1030 GDDR5 version with 2 gigabytes of dedicated VRAM. So I've got the GPU installed, but I still don't have any storage. Now you can opt to get a mechanical drive when you buy these on eBay. I figured I'd throw an SSD in here, and I also picked up this little SSD caddy for about seven bucks on Amazon. And I also went with the cheapest SSD that I could find at the time of making this. It's a 250 gigabyte Western Digital Blue. So we are a bit limited on storage, but luckily this SSD caddy does support two 2.5 inch drives. So if I wanna add more storage down the road, be it another SSD or a 2.5 inch mechanical drive, I can do it very easily. And I won't have to buy another SATA cable or anything like that because this did come with two pre-installed. One for the DVD drive, which I'm not going to be using, and one for the hard drive. So if I do add another storage drive down the road, I can just unplug the DVD drive and use those cables for that. So I'm actually almost done here, but there is one thing that I highly recommend when you're buying a used PC. Change out the thermal paste. These things are business PCs, they're made to run all the time, and this stuff gets baked on. Don't use a knife like I'm using, I just kind of wanted to give you a little demo, but I can't even scrape this off, the old thermal paste that was on this heat sink. I use isopropyl alcohol and a rag to clean it off, and basically any thermal paste is going to work, I just happen to have some of this Noctua laying around. So I'm going to throw a little bit on the CPU, plug the fan back in, and mount the heat sink back down. That way I don't have to worry about any cooling issues with this CPU. It's all said and done, I have something that looks like this. I have that SSD installed, the GPU, and I've also swapped out the thermal paste on the CPU. Okay, so I've just went ahead and installed Windows 10 Pro. As you can see, we have that i5-4570, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM running at 1600 megahertz, and the NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030. It's two gigabytes, and this is the GDDR5 version. I can't stress this enough, if you're looking into getting one of these cards, Make sure it's GDDR5 and not GDDR4. So a setup like this actually has a lot going for it. We do have a decent little gaming setup and we'll get into some gaming in just a second, but this is also a fully functional desktop. I mean, you could use this for work and play if you really need to. Web browsing is super smooth. And I'm connected over ethernet here. Everything loads up really quickly. Uh, WebGL, we'll just check this out. So we're sitting at 500, still at 60 at 1,000, 
still at 60 at 5,000, still at 60 at 15,000. If we go up to 20, that's when it starts to struggle. 4K video playback on this machine is absolutely amazing. As you can see, I do have stats for nerds going on, and we're sitting at 4K. Four K sixty FPS streaming from YouTube, zero drop frames. If you want to use something like this for Plex, it's also going to work just as well. Skip ahead a bit here. Still, zero drop frames. So yeah, this is definitely cheap enough to put together as an everyday desktop. We have really great 4K video playback. You want to do Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime, Hulu, all that stuff's going to work just fine. If you want to do some image editing, it's going to work out. If you want to do some light video editing, you'll have no trouble doing 1080p video here. So in my opinion, all around, this is a great little budget desktop. But we did put this together for some gaming and emulation, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first up, we have Fall Guys 1080p, medium settings, we're getting a constant 60 FPS. It's not the hardest game to run, and as you can see here, it's doing a great job at 1080p. Up in the top left hand corner, I do have Afterburner running so we can see what's going on with the PC itself. And I'm also going to list the name of the game and the settings used in the lower left hand corner so you know what's going on at any given time. I'm going to let a couple more PC games play out that work just fine, and when we move up to the harder to run stuff, I'll be back. So everything we've seen so far works great at 1080p, low, medium settings, let's take it up a notch. Doom Eternal, this is where the GT 1030 starts to struggle. We're using the Vulcan back in, but I did have to take it down to 720p low, and we cannot get 60 out of it. You could run this at 30 all day long, and I'd say that's not bad for a $200 PC. It's definitely not the best performance with the GT 1030, but if you went with that GTX 1650, you could get 60 out of this all day long. And finally, we have Halo 3. Now, I've tested this on a lot of low-end PCs, and it's really all over the place. As you can see here, we're getting an average of around 88. That's at 720p. If I take it up to 1080, we're going to average of around 40. So that jump there is pretty significant with Halo 3. And like I mentioned, I have seen this a lot on lower-end systems. So in my opinion, for a $200 setup, PC gaming performance is actually pretty great. But what about emulation? Now, that's where this little machine really shines. Ready? So first up, we have some Dreamcast using the Redream emulator. Totally maxed out here on the resolution for this emulator at 3840 by 2888. We have Better Alive 2, 60 across the board. Performance with Dreamcast on a machine like this using the Redream emulator is going to be amazing. Next up, we have some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator, 1440p, Automodalista, which is one of the harder ones to emulate in my experience, and again, we have 60 all the way through. I haven't seen any frame dips or anything like that, and I probably could have taken this resolution up, 
I know for a fact with easier to emulate GameCube games, we can go to 4K with this, but what about Wii emulation? Well, I tested a couple Wii games, and again, we're getting just as good performance as we did with Dolphin or the Redream emulator with Wii. I'm at 1440p, this is Sonic Colors, and this is running at 30fps because this natively ran at 30fps on the Wii, but we're getting great performance here. The 3DS emulation is another one that this is going to handle just fine. I've always had really good luck with Intel and NVIDIA with the Citra emulator here as opposed to AMD, especially the newer AMD APUs. I've never been able to get really good performance out of those, but when I move over to even older Intel chips and older NVIDIA cards, it works just fine. And the same goes for PS2. I'm using PC SX2 1.7 with the OpenGL back end. If you want to do DirectX 11, it's going to work just as well, but I wanted to test OpenGL because NVIDIA really does shine in that department. And as you can see here, full speed. And finally, Wii U using SimU. This is Breath of the Wild using the Vulcan back end. I have the internal resolution set to 720p. While we can't hit a constant 60 with this setup, if you go ahead and lock this at 30, you'll have a really good experience. And you'll notice a couple stutters here and there. That's shader cache in the background. I don't have everything cached up. But performance here was way better than I thought. And it really comes down to the SimU team implementing that Vulcan back end. So in the end, total cost on this system was $216, and personally, I think it's well worth the price here. Like I mentioned, if you do want to up performance a bit, I would go with that GTX 1650, but if you're looking to build a budget gaming PC slash emulation slash work PC for around 200 bucks, it's really hard to beat something like this with the GT 1030 installed. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description. You definitely have to keep your eye out for a good deal on a GPU. The GT 1030s are going for around 80 bucks, but you can find them for 55 up to $70 being sold as used on eBay, so you have to keep your eye out. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.